He has been the reaper of souls in loser's bracket, and he sees one more before him, and it's best Ness. Welcome to Grand Final here at Super Smash Galaxy 1. Hey, man, keep your eyes open. Game one. Okay, this is going to be hype. So right now, oh, God. So that was kind of a sus, uh, sus scramble right there going into the into the neutral B on block. So we're just, they're probably just feeling each other out. It's only a couple minutes in. Let's see what we have we got here. So right now the spacing coming from PK Fires right now is actually pretty good because like let me let me be honest, like PK Fires is an obnoxious pool, but it also has insane startup. So like if you place a really bad PK Fire, it's a free opening. So being being careful with like, where you put them is going to be really important. Right now we see Spargo doing a great job of positioning himself using the that weird uh, hitbox on cross slash to just kind of shut down PK Fire coming on ledge right there. Aggressive reversal coming from uh, Best Nest. Put off stage again, no jump. Okay, opportunity. Like you see how he's constantly kind of like bring his double jump coming on with aerials and stuff like that. He's gonna be able to be very careful with that habit because Cloud eats that option up for free, especially with how you see Spargo spacing right now. What happened? Spargo is just so, he's expertly placing every single hitbox that he possibly can. And what dominance that we are seeing from this young man. It has been absolutely incredible. And Best Nest right now, maybe just having a little bit of a hard time uh, capitalizing on it and finding that landing because, I mean, all those things that you can uh, that you can get with those kills, you kind of have to approach to do it. And how do you approach that man with that sword? Honestly, it's kind of scary. Because, I, I mean, obviously he has opportunities, but, like, if he whips, like, close enough to him where he can, like, buff or something like a dash attack or a fair. But as you see, with the, you're not going to get that a lot with Spargo. Like, he's going to give you as little opportunities as possible. Again, the jump from ledge. I told you, that is a very common habit you see with almost every nest. And, and you see Spargo able to capitalize on that super well. That's what I was mainly talking about. It's going to be really, really hard to, for Best Nest to get off this ledge with, it, with how Spargo is playing right now. His ledge play is almost flawless whenever it comes to, like, when he has someone in that position. Okay, let's see what we got here. Back air, spacing well. Goes ahead. It's like, you kind of see, like, how he's always placing himself, like, right at, like, the best way I could, I could say is, like, back air distance. And, like, he's keeping track of his shield health so he knows when he can set up these shield posts. Double jump is burnt. This is oh. this is looking to be a far quicker game, number one, than uh, really I anticipated. I can mm. speak for anyone else in chat, but I get the feeling that it's... Uh, a rather similar uh, notion from really everyone involved, but a quick little stock take from Best Ness, and all of a sudden a ray of hope shining. It's gonna be on Spargo to snuff it out, which he does right there. Yep. One yep. swing of the sword, and it falls yep. heavy upon the head of Ness for Whoa. game Whoa. number Whoa. one. Now, uh, Ronan, I did a little bit of counting while I was on uh, Smash uh, Smash.gg, and I did some uh, counting. I mentioned prior that he had lost in on the qualifier for top 64 this is back in the top uh 256 bracket and he lost the hollow pup of very talented palutena okay and uh by a score of two to one since then okay. may i list off the names that he has taken out since then oh i'm all ears man let's hear it spargo had went inkling and took out raven king two nil then took eventually winds up taking out midi then takes out epic gabriel then oh takes my out gosh. hydra Another Palutena, so maybe getting a little bit of uh, revenge there. Then yeah. taking out the obviously the Luigi nine and nine, but mm -hmm. yeah, by a score of two to one. And then Poke Lamb, and then Yes, and then Sonic, and then Skittle, and now he is here, Best Nest, staring down the blade of Cloud Strife with Spargo covered in his Bro. enemy's blood as we Man. go back to Battlefield for game two. This level of momentum is kind of scary on, on someone who is this determined to win this tournament. Because right now, like, especially from what I saw, he was dominating. Um, I would say full dominating, but he had enough of an edge to where I'd say he was definitely outplaying Best Nest with how he was facing and everything. Best Nest has to be very well aware of every option he burns when he's in disadvantage. Because as you can see there, Ooh. this definitely is aware. And he is going to sauce you every time you do something on autopilot. Because he has the spreadsheet on what Ness players want to do in disadvantage. Oh, Spargo's Twitch, because apparently he's doing speed run. I don't know how else to describe this, because Best Ness, he's being put in more compromising a position than we've seen him put in all day today. Oh, absolutely. We have not seen him tested quite like this. No, because right now Spargo's like facing his neutral, everything is playing perfectly around what Ness wants to do. This is definitely, definitely looking like a really bad matchup the more I'm watching this. Because like as long as Spargo doesn't just commit, like he can literally just sit back and whip punish everything best Ness has to offer right now. 
and he just plays like he literally like takes advantage of this character's disadvantage super super well opportunity he bet like oh my god that reversal was so good up smash whips into a dash tech didn't kill though okay so like every time he goes in the air after uh bestness it seems to be mostly a 50 50 of if he's going to nair or if he's going to air dodge which most likely is always going to be an air dodge just for the fact that he knows that if he nairs he's going to get punished by that huge dish going to score so the moment like the the door is closing slowly but right now we see a huge reversal coming from bestness bro he caught that lenny with pk fire and that was a wrap wonderfully done and that is the exact sort of shift in the tide of the battle that best nest needed sitting at 148 percent perhaps you're playing for a tie situation but he's not done Looking oh my to carry god right into the blast zone catch him with the oh pk thunder before he can snap ledge and eventually it's going to be the dash attack that stymies the momentum just a little bit but you can never ever count out best nest and that was true positive Oh yeah, his reversal game this whole tournament has been absolutely insane and we're seeing that right now. This is his opportunity right now. He can end this right now. I'm pretty sure it's over. Yep, it's over. It's yep. over. What I say, man, wow. his reversal game is stupid. It is so dumb. Oh my God, what is it this kid on? I swear to God, he like saw that he was down. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna take three five hour energies right now. I'm gonna wait, watch this. Yeah. and. Those 15 consecutive hours of energy that you get from that certainly paying dividends for Best Nest as we take uh, one more look at the MXC Impact replay. And we're going to, uh, yeah, again, the narr that is such an awareness check that you really do have to be, uh, I, you have to be on your point. You have to have your uh, hand, your finger ready on the shoulder button. Otherwise, you're just kind of losing that stock. We have seen Best Nest just catch people a deceptive amount of people really with that nair uh, going into the stage and you're just if you're not able to tech you're kind of just losing the stock it just launches you that way absolutely the one thing that is definitely going against spargo is even though on paper this is um a bad matchup bestness has all the time in the world to adapt okay it's like he has all the time in the world to figure out exactly what spargo is doing to play around him and acting accordingly and the great thing about ness is he's a very flexible character and we've seen that very clearly with best nest so spargo is going to be have to be on his toes and make sure that he like, you know know that he the same thing is not going to work over and over again like your your, like your win objective and like exploiting the character flaws will always work but where you're dealing with someone who's really smart right now so he definitely can uh, can counter adapt as well and we're seeing that right now up air good reversal right off the bat goes ahead and put them back in the juggle he actually frame traps the neutral air dodge Oh, with punish, but nothing big comes out of it. Tom, oh my God, dude, the fake into the grab. Yo, yo, he, yo, he's actually moving on him right now. We're seeing some high level neutral at this moment. Okay, coming off ledge again. Tries to go for the scoop, but the great stall coming from the uh, best nest right there. Goes for the cross slash, and that's not gonna be it. He still has his jump. No, no, he, uh, he oh, actually my. decided not to burn it because he knew if he burned it, like Spargo thought the jump was coming. I thought the jump was coming. Best nest said no. He just wanted to see what Best Nest was willing to do, perhaps as an offensive measure, see if he could bait Best Nest into maybe pressing a button that, you know, Spargo could just eat up. Maybe oh, absolutely. Up I, I like it, and I do like the thinking, but Best Nest right now is going to have to be just a little cheekier than that if he wants to take advantage of uh, of what Spargo oh is doing at the table. That dash attack will he just go did off it. the top. Yeah. That, that, was, that was risky, because if he whiffed that, that was a back throw. That was oh, great. Yeah. But then again, you're able to take that stock, much like Best Ness is looking to do here. So you kind of realize it. It's part of the flow of the game. Maybe it's not mm -hmm. something that you want to happen, but you know, you you just want to be able to take that stock, say that you got it off the board, build up the uh, the quote unquote extra credit, as it were, and you, know, you just kind of move along. That's called the confidence, ma'am. That's called the confidence and knowing what your opponent is going to do. And Spargo's got all that confidence right now. And honestly, can you blame the man? Look at his loser's run. Like, this man literally sauced, like, the majority of, like, like a lot of, like, the real talent in this tournament. So I could definitely understand why he's feeling himself right now with a lot of these calls. You know, I, I couldn't help but look at the bracket before that, and I was noticing one of the potential matchups that I was looking forward to was Spargo versus a... Uh, Really a tri-state Wi-Fi mainstay at this point, WebJP, the uh, Lucas extraordinaire that wound up placing top eight at a few major Wi-Fi tournaments. I believe uh, 
wound up placing top eight. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. What model shifting, dude? Model shifting. Because the thing is, is best nest that nair was actually mad smart. But because it wasn't necessarily as positive on hit as he'd probably like it to be, he just buffered up smash as quick as possible. I don't know if that was just the panic option for Spargo or if he just knew that that was going to happen, but we're going to go ahead and give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> you have no choice but to give him the benefit of the doubt for being real about it. But Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, but, I mean, before last game, Spargo had won five straight games on stream in the pressure cooker, so certainly no lack of confidence from the young man. Spargo winging that sword uh, wildly and freely, and who could blame him at this point? It's going to be best nest just kind of sitting in shield, waiting for the punish. Excellent oh patience God. there. And really, that has... Good! Really? Wow, okay, you just avoided everything there, and I don't know how. Like, once he burned his double jump, I was like, that's it. And then he just comes in with the craziest angle on his upbeat. Like, that was that was one of the smartest plays I've seen him do yet. That was insanely nice. These are both two... These are two veterans of the game. Like, seeing mm -hmm. them fight deep into the bracket uh, in, in an offline tournament would not be uh, completely far-fetched. Absolutely so, like, not. Like, these are not just Wi-Fi Warriors. These are two individuals with excellent fundamentals, with excellent game awareness, and we're seeing that play out online, which is a whole different game, to be sure. But then again, you're not in any way seeing a lack of quality from either of these two gentlemen. Like, right now, I'm, I, I can basically very clearly what Bestless is looking for. Like, he's kind of, like, just standing off. He's like, yeah, he's taking a little bit of chip damage here and there, but he knows that if he can, like, use... Like, back, like, wait for the backer to come out. He can get a whiff punish with fair. And he actually went for it. Oh, God. He actually went for it in that last stock. But he just barely fell out of fair. And that's how he ended up getting reversal there. Oh, God. The corner. He's got to be careful. He has no shield health. He's going to stall. This would definitely be the time to stall. But he's got to be careful. No, oh, you my have God. no choice. You have no choice. You have to go to the leg. You have to run into that sword. You have to give Spargo that two to one set lead one away from the reset i cannot believe that connected i can dude that was good that was generally good that was a sour spot too yeah that was, that was actually the sour spot you're right but really had no choice you made best nest kind of eat away at his at his own shield like he really had no choice oh but absolutely kinda try to try to jank out some sort of recovery but yeah spargo Doing absolutely amazing. I see that. I, I see the hombres in the chat. Absolutely. Vamos, uh, vamos, Spargo. Esta noche tenemos que ganar. Yeah, we know, man. As we go to game number four. Again, final destination is the spot. Best Nest probably thinking he has a win condition here. So, what do we... Uh... Right now, what I'm seeing with Best Nest is that he's doing a great job of moving... Well, was doing a great job of moving around <laughs> what he saw Spargo doing. Like he's doing right now. Like, that's what he's really good at, is like adapting his movement and how he faints in front of your, his opponent's face to open them up to swing so he can find a whip punish. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Like, Spargo still has got a bit of an edge, but, like, he's still, like, playing around what his weaknesses are really well. That was a very aggressive approach right there. He has to be careful there. Like, especially whenever, whenever you see Cloud has limit on deck, he's got even better reversals of B side B and everything else. Oh god. Oh, like it's like god. like we, he ends up in these positions right here, like where they're both at like super hyper sense from trading and stuff like that, but getting edged out by uh, by just some straight hit and neutral. It, it really just comes down to uh sometimes it just feels like it comes down to the character's weight. And obviously there is advantage Spargo. Certainly uh more so when you have limit, even though obviously a little bit nerfed from uh, oh, yeah. Nash 4. But oh. you just have that big sword oh. and you are sent to the tenth below! What oh else my can god. You do? I don't know how you're gonna stop. Oh my I was about to start talking and then now he's like, I went for you too! I'm best, still in this! Best man said, hold up, wait a minute, y'all thought I was finished. Really came in here with the meek mill business, and now all of a sudden, uh, you can never count out best nest. And I apologize to him personally for doing so. I don't know, Chief. Right now this is looking kind of rough. He actually managed to get the air dodge there. That whip back air might end up causing Spargo. Nope. He's, he's aware of like whenever he ends up in that position where they're like boxing and neutral that Bestnet loves the full hop. So he has full confidence whenever they end up in that situation that he's going to defuse the, the pressure by full hopping with an aerial. And he's just ready to space that back here every time. Oh my god, he caught the landing. Up smash. The double jump burnt. Nope. He went in the air after him when he had back air. That was very... Oh! Back air. 
He's, no, he's still alive, but for how long? Oh, he's got to be ready oh my on that attack. Oh, God, he could do this. He's at 1 at 11. Best Ness can 100% get this. Uh, you're absolutely right, but it's going to take oh. a little bit of shenanigan reaping. You cannot have nope. your jump caught like that. Fargo taking oh, full advantage, and this is set number 12 that Spargo mm. has taken in a row again, getting into losers at the hands of a Palutena t t 13 wow. sets ago. And this that goes 13 sets ago. That was 13 sets ago. And the thing is, is that goes back to what I was talking about as one of the main habits I was seeing with Best Nest, where he loves to float and like stay at Spargo knew. He knew. And he put that sword right where it needed to be like yeah it was just perfect spacing i mean take us through it because now it's a whole new ball game you know you're reset it's completely fresh best nest is in losers now but spargo seems like it you have all the momentum in the world on your side mm -hmm. but what was best nest's plan there like just take us through the rationale so the main thing is I could definitely see the gears turning with uh, Best Nest. Like, he's obviously trying to focus more on whiff punishing and stuff like that, but he really needs to address some of the flow chart things he does in neutral, which is a lot, like I said before, floating at full hop distance. And, like, even if it's empty movement to bait, maybe he could try B reversing a bit more just so he can kind of, like, use it more as a feint to whenever he, like, you know, Spargo swings at him. That's fine. But honest to God, if we're being quite honest, I, I would try not to do it much at all if I'm at higher percents just because Spargo is just going to be there with that meaty disjoint every time. So it, it's very scary. And whenever it comes to, like, Spargo burning his double jump, I wouldn't focus so much more on going up in the air after them. If he focused more on, like, catching the landing itself, he might find more... Uh, co uh, consistency whenever challenging him when he's in that disadvantageous position. Yeah, it okay. makes wonder, but now as we go back to Battlefield, this is where we started game number one. This is where Spargo wound up taking those first two games. So, as we look here to, uh, to game number one of the reset, I mean, certainly there's a reason for going back here, but it didn't really seem like it was all that close to, to the game number one. Remember, that was probably the quickest game of the set. It could so, just be a comfort pick, honestly. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, Cloud's advantage state's dumb on here, but if, I'm, I'm watching Best Ness's movement right now, and he's like, you know, he's, he's moving. He's, he knows exactly what to do in this situation, but it's also going to make his landings easier to trap as well with the platforms assist. Exactly. I mean, you're basically just a... Uh, if you're Cloud, you're playing, uh, I mean, Ness might be the one with the bat, but if you're Cloud, you're playing T-Ball. If, uh, if Best Ness, uh, if Best Ness winds up on there. Good oh, that was okay. Thunder. Cheeky oh stuff and caught with the up air. It's like, you know what? You can catch landings on platforms. Well, so can I. I am, in fact, Best Ness. But oh, my gosh. Oh, wait. There it is. There it is. Opportunity. 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 Good catch on the air dodge. And oh, just like that. Oh my God, hey, dude. welcome to the compilation. I think that was a zero to death. It absolutely was. Like, that's what I'm saying. Is like, Best Ness is an extremely adaptive player. Even though this matchup may be cheeks, if he has a good beat of what you're doing whenever he's putting on the pressure and what you do at a hit stun, he does an amazing job of baiting out reversals and just keeping the momentum going. And that's exactly what we saw happen to Spargo's second stock. Beautiful stuff we are seeing right now from, uh, I mean, what, what is it that is changed in Best Ness? It, in your mind, like from the last game to this one, because the beautiful, I mean, you miss the tech, you're going to get punished, especially by someone like Best Ness, but I mean, something shifted in the mind of Best Ness. I'm seeing that killer instinct come out just a little bit more. I'm not seeing Spargo miss all that much. I'm just seeing Best Ness not give him as many opportunities. It's mostly like he's starting to understand like where Spargo's threat bubble is and he's dancing around it really well, along with starting to understand his player habits because of his godlike in-game awareness. Okay, both these players obviously have great in-game awareness, so he's starting to see like, okay, I understand how he wants to get past me, and now I'm just going to constantly throw out these feints and wait for him to commit and then take it a mile, and it's working out in his favor a lot. So like... Right now, let's see, like right now he's just kind of spacing, holding center stage, and now he's got Spargo actually jumping in and like picking more aggressive options, and now he just, he's just kind of putting out hitboxes where he knows Spargo's going to be, and he's doing a great job of it, and that was just clean. He genuinely outplayed him that time. He genuinely outplayed him once he started figuring out what he wanted to do whenever he like put him in like a lot of these, playing really well around like, you know, just 
shimmying around what he knew Spark was going to do. He wasn't going for as many aggressive options whenever it came to like the flowchart things we saw in the last game. He literally just completely changed it up. And you're going to see that at top level all the time. You're meant to flow around what you see in neutral, not just what you're used to doing. So like literally this is just, ju this is just proof that he is not a flowchart nest. Like that's like, he played that so well. He adapted perfectly. And Oh, Oh no. Oh. Spargo. Spargo. Yeah, I think he, Spargo knows. See, Spargo knows. He figured out. He figured it out. Time to bring out. Time to bring out the inkling. This could go so? either way. Yeah. No no, oh. no, 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 no. He's he's had too much success on this cloud. In my yeah, opinion. I was about to say. He, yeah. He had to make you think about it, though. He had to make you think about it. I think it, it might have been a stage thing. Yeah, that's it. Oh, Yo, wait, you're right. Sorry. So we're going triplast, but we're seeing a shorter ceiling for one, and mm -hmm. two, we're seeing the uh, we're seeing the diagonals. So maybe a little bit easier to catch the recovery with that. I'm not really sure, but I'm not sure. I'm not I mean, really sure exactly why you would need to give best nest any more any more of a chance to potentially tech something below the stage. I mean, yeah, sure, but at the same time, it's also e earlier kills, and I mean, it still benefits his, his like you know how well his advantage state works in this matchup. But at the same time, is how good you saw best nest moving around these platforms. You know, I don't know if I'd want the extra risk, but Spargo feels pretty confident in it, so, I mean, let it rock, I guess. Oh, wow, there goes Limit. I keep on forgetting there's a timer on that thing now. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely something that you have to take into consideration. But, but you kind of uh, see, like, what you see him in neutral, they're both kind of, like, full hopping, but not really committing, but staying right outside of each other's threat bubble. That's what we're seeing right now. They both have a very similar way of playing this in neutral. It's gonna like, but the fact that Spargo has the edge in range, along with awareness of what Vestas is doing, it gives him the slight edge, and that is depressing. Uh, that you, is depressing. You hug the stage, man. You hug the stage. All right, that's uh, that that's pretty tragic, admittedly. So as we go to stock number uh, two for both of these uh, fine young gentlemen, all of a sudden you're seeing Spargo work his way back into this thing. That is not the position you want to be in right now. Best nest up oh, one no. nil, but yep. you fed him the back air. Yeah, he didn't neutral air dodge or anything. I guess he had full confidence that he wasn't going to take him at that angle. But the thing is, is like the angle he was coming in from, like even if he neutral air dodge, Spargo could have still went for the frame trap there. Okay. Like, both of them, like, I'd actually say e both players are equally playing at ledge pretty well. It's just ultimately, like, it just seems like Spargo, kit-wise, is just, like, has the better options in this position. But they're both very well aware of what the game is, like, what the, the little neutral mini games are. But Spargo just said, I don't care. Oh, Hold this three stock. Okay, I know y'all about to put the trees in the chat. Y'all don't need to tell me. Yeah, I, we already knew. We knew. We knew. Come on. Oh my of god. Of course man. we had the trees. Yeah, you know what? Five hundred people just saw that freaking tree. I don't even know how to I don't even know how else to put that. Man. That's nuts. They, both stock. these players are in amazing. grand finals after all we've just seen. And after I, I don't know what you do to stop Spargo at Dude. this point. Because that is so deflating. You just won. You just had that one nil uh set advantage, and then all of a sudden you get the tree thrown in your face like that. Man, I, I'm not going to lie, though. If if Best Ness all of a sudden just counter-adapted and brought this back, I'm not even going to be surprised. Because as dominant as as we saw Spargo before and see Best Ness win that last game, if his mentality is strong enough to endure that three-stock, I could definitely see him clutching it out if he, if he has the right mindset for it. Okay, I mean, that fair. Is, that is a Ooh. possibility. I will assure you that you know, you're not wrong about that. But, I mean, to say that it's a possibility is not to say that it's a probability. I, I, I mean, yeah. know at this point. Well, the big Spargo. thing right now is, oh, God, he burned that double jump, and Spargo is all over him for it. He's got to be aware of that, man. Literally, the, I, that would be the number one thing I would be keeping track of if I was best Nez, is, like, don't throw out empty aerials at all if you can help it. Because if you do, Spargo is going to... Oh, my God. If he went all the way around the world and got that stock, oh, my God. That, that, the mental damage from that, that would have hurt me. And I'm not even playing this set. Yeah. That, that's kind of the thing that we've been noticing uh, throughout Spargo's run in the uh, in the elimination bracket, isn't it? Is that he does have not just the, the range with the sword with which to punish it, but also the positional awareness to keep a certain range that he can uh, take advantage anyway. Certainly, even with the uh, best, ne even with Ness's aerial drift, you're going to find a way 
You're, you're going to find a way to uh, to punish this thing. You have oh. the range, you have the mobility, and Spargo specifically has the uh, wherewithal to be able to get these punishes in the first place. Best Nest trying to give himself a little bit of space on the flat ground. Can we can we lane. please can we please talk about how crazy Best Nest micro spacing and shield pressure has been in the corner this whole stock? I'm oh, honestly absolutely. surprised he has not found the stock yet, but his. He is doing stuff I've not seen any Ness player do on block. This man, this man putting on, like, shield, like, he's a Ken main, dude. Like, what the, oh, there it is. The classic. The classic. But like I said, like, look at it now. Like, he's right back in it. Like, he's right back to, like, keeping up with Spargo this whole time. Like, the, this, this kid's mental endurance is actually insane. Both of them, honestly. Especially one that really? came all the way from Pike, like, loser's bracket like he did. Okay, let's see what happens. Again, like... Oh my, what? what? He faked it out. He made him think like he was going to up the end, but he hit the ground. He's like, okay, that's fine. I'm just going to hold this position. Got the gift. What did I tell you, wow. bro? What did I tell you? This yeah, kid is done. Is. He's not you done. Can't. He's still out here. And he's just not going to deal with this spacing BS coming from Spargo. He's like, okay, whatever. If you want to sit and space my shield, I'm just going to recuperate the ledge and pray I mix up past you. And so far, he's been doing a great job of it. Oh my god, the confidence on that fair. The confidence. No, a B. I think he might have tried to, but the multi hits might have ended up uh, like shield poking him, or he might have tried to bash out of him and end up getting hit anyways. Right now, Spargo's got the positioning. Good stall coming from Best Nest. So the PK fire, not safe. Gets the back throw. Let's trap. Okay, does he have to. He's gonna go ahead and go for the safe. He has to look for the dunk, yeah. Or tilt. Oh no. Oh he has god, no dude. choice but to look for some cheese off stage. I mean, that's, at this point, you have to find any way that you possibly can off this. This time in the down air, that time you can't win. You can't win them all. But what I'm seeing from Spargo more than anything else is an unwillingness to simply relinquish the stock. I do quite like that. You have oh, yes. to find a way to keep Best Nest in disadvantage as much as humanly possible. But it you better. Like, yeah. This spacing's insane. Yeah, but I mean, how how in the world do you deal with someone, not just someone you know with the with the flow chart knowledge, but really someone who knows their character as intimately as Best Nick does? This is going to come down to how well you can adapt to your opponent's patterns, because as they're counter adapting, it's like everything. Okay, I say this all the time on the stream. Everything you do is a call and response to your opponent. So how well you can uh, respond to what your opponent is saying is what's ultimately going to help you win the set. And right now, we're seeing a very clear response from Best Nets. Absolutely. The gauntlet has been thrown. Spargo has been nothing but perfect up to this point. And now, down two games to one, facing elimination from this bracket at second place, he'll have no choice but to be perfect as he gets caught. That, that shield was weakened, and of course, that uh, that powerful frame 10 back air from Ness. You can only do so much against that. The, the talent oozing off of both these players, I genuinely don't know what's going to happen. I genuinely don't know, because they keep counter-adapting to each other back and forth. Like, one minute you think, oh, this player is clearly outplaying him. He's definitely the better player today. And then, no, they just adapt. And I will say, matchup-wise, I still would stand by Spargo's got the edge here. But Best Ness's just fundamental and just in-game awareness to just be able to see something be like, oh, this is what he wants. I'm going to stay in this blind spot, and I'm going to like hit him one time and take him for a ride. And take him for a ride he has, as he has done for, uh, frankly, all of us. So it's going to be Spargo. I mean, he responded with a three-stock last time. We'll have to see what the response is. Here, this is game number four at Pokemon Stadium 2. The back air keeping that nest in disadvantage. This is very bad. Oh, that's a very bad whip. But he cleans it up with a plan B, just jumps back with Nair and puts him right back at ledge. This whole stock, Spargo's been playing really well, controlling center stage, but gets... Oh, there's the reversal. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God, he made it back. Oh, oh, catch catch breath, throw. oh no. Catch your breath, you possibly can. Chases him right back to ledge on shot. That Dude. Spargo has been able to survive these two brushes with death that could have put him in such a bad disadvantage. But both of them have to work a little harder than that. That frame five oh. air followed up by the back air. Beautifully Dude. done by Best Nest. Take stock number one. This is actual insanity. It's literally going to come down. Like both of them understand what they want to do so well. It's really going to come down to who messes up first because they're both playing really well in neutral, especially what I'm seeing from Best Nest. Best Nest is neutral is being played better than I've seen yet. He's definitely started to figure out how to work around Spargo. But, oh, but he's got to be careful with these PK fires on block because Spargo knows he can just position him at ledge. And once Spargo gets that positioning, we already know what he's going to do. He's ready with the up smash. 
he's, I'm telling you right now, Spargo knows whenever he's at high percents, he wants to float above his head. He's got to stop doing that. Oh my god, but he ends up getting stuck anyways at ledge. Up B, tries to get the frame trap, but luckily, low enough percent to where he can up tilt to get the reversal. Nair on block, gonna space back, try to catch the landing, but again, PK Fire's got enough lag to where the back air will connect. Oh my god, bro. They're spacing okay. each other out so well, and this is again the minutia of the game where it becomes so important, especially at the top level. It really just comes down to how well do you know this game and how well can you apply your knowledge. These are the ultimate quiz masters for each other. Spargo mm -hmm. with the spacing and the oh no, oh but the oh my god, out. that's it. One you one. One aggressive option off ledge, and you're gonna get yo-yoed, man. That's the scariest part about this right now. That very well could have be what cost uh, Spargo his momentum. Let's see how he counter adapts right now. But like the I way I'm has seeing, no choice but to be perfect. He's one stock away from elimination. Absolutely. But right now he's doing such a great job. If he keeps playing and spacing like he's going to, like he is right now, he's absolutely gonna get take this. He's absolutely gonna take this. The forward oh. airs. We've seen him carry people into the blast zone just like that. Skittles falling victim to it, and when oh. he went back. Best Ness. Opportunity. He's got to take yeah, This is kill percent if you uh, you combo it right, but it's going to be the limit break. Blade beam to the face. One stock to stay alive for Spargo at a 66 percentage point disadvantage. And looking for something off stage, but first you got to get him there. But it's so going good. to be Spargo taking off stage first. Dude, that play at ledge was so good because not only did he go for the down air, he had the plan B of going back to roll distance to set up a ledge trap just in case. The level, the layers to this man's option coverage coming from Spargo is actually insane, but the pressure and movement coming from, from a best nest is also just as impressive. I have no idea who's going to take this. I actually Spar don't. Spargo is actually falling into that trap again. He's letting, like, best nest walking up and shielding, making Spargo sit in shield and eat away at his own shield, letting him be hoisted by his own batard, as it were. And best nest looking for an oh. opportunity out of that. You know he's going to be looking for that back air at a certain percentage at a certain part of the stage. It's just a matter of when it's going to come. Best nest, air dodges back to the ledge, and perhaps the opportunity will strike soon. It's going to be the up smash going up the world, and best nest better than all the rest. Finding Bro. the victory, and the earthbound kid is the king of the Super Smash Galaxy. Bro, that up smash was so good. I told you, I knew he was just staying right outside of Spargo's fret bubble that whole time. It was just waiting for that one opportunity. And the fact, I did not expect the up smash. I thought it was gonna be like a back air or something like that because he dropped, like he actually dropped an opportunity when he got back air high whenever he was at the ledge in that last play in the corner. Because Spargo knew every time he put him in that position in the corner, he always loved the full hop and he put the back air there. Spargo whiffed that opportunity off ledge and then, I mean, Best Nest just reset neutral and just found the perfect opportunity. Like, the first person to whiff something in neutral costed him, and the first one to whiff was Spargo. And there you have it, man. There you have it, yo. That was an insane top eight. And I say it. Oh, my God. It really, really was. Oh, man. This top eight was so hype. I mean, this whole tournament, honestly, was super great. I just want to thank so many people. There's so many people to thank. But first, we got to start with our top eight warriors over here with studio announcer Ronin X. Homies, please let the Twitch audience know where they can find Ronin, you. I'll let you go first. Sure thing. Yo, what's up, everybody? My, my name is Ronin X. Um, I'm a Smash Ultimate coach. So if you guys would like to check me out sometime, make sure to hit me up on Discord. Or you can also find me on Twitter as well at RoninX1819. That's also my handle on Twitch. I'm a Shoto Terry specialist, but I also coach other characters as well. So if you guys are interested in that, consider coming and hitting me up sometime. I also make YouTube content as well. Same handle, RoninX1819. You guys can check me out there if you guys want to learn Shoto's or Terry. Or you just want to see me goon out with the boys and stuff like that. I got all types of content there and got more variety coming your way soon. And uh, that it was wonderful casting with you, by the way. Uh, hey. Ronan, excellent job. Um, my name is Stu the Announcer. I am uh, I'm a caster from, from the tri-state area. I guess I'm just in Texas for the week, but... Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, at, at Stu the Announcer. Please uh, consult your uh, your technical manuals for your phone or electronic device to make sure that it's compatible with yours. And I uh, I also stream on Twitch, so twitch.tv slash Stu the Announcer. I generally don't play Smash. I just like playing a bunch of... I play a lot of Splatoon, actually. So, uh, yeah, definitely hit me up. Uh, certainly appreciate you all. Uh, sharing your love of Smash, and uh, if you've enjoyed this tournament, by all means, please 
follow this channel. We've got more coming up next uh, next weekend, in fact, with uh, the heist in Smashville. It's going to be hype. I'm really looking forward to it. Hey, man, I just always wanted to go ahead and say you were a great co-caster. I had a lot of fun, man. I just want to let you know you were you great, brought the energy, and I had a lot of fun doing this. I mean, it's a, it's not hard to be energetic for uh, sets like this, for quality like this, and certainly for a crew like this uh, at ANG Esports, and certainly Absolutely. our good friends over at VB Fusion and Peak Tournaments, and really just everyone involved was uh, absolutely on the top of their game.